Welcome, folks. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the breadboard, which is used for testing and prototyping in electric circuits. As introduction for the uh, electric circuit laboratory that we use here uh, at Washington State University. So this is a typical breadboard that you might use in the laboratory. If you uh, look at this board that will be used for testing, that you can see that this board has a 2D array of holes. There is holes will uh, be divided into rows and columns. So we have a bunch of columns and a bunch of rows that uh, are made of holes. So if you look into uh, this board in, uh, uh, in particular, you can see that in the middle there is this island, this island in the middle that separates the holes into two sides or two banks the top side, the top bank, and the bottom bank. And then you're going to see that each of those sides uh, is divided into uh, columns of holes where each column has five holes. So over here you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five holes as a one column. Over here we have one, two, three, four, five holes as one column. So some might put the board in a vertical position, which is the wrong way of doing it. So over here, if I do it in a vertical position here, uh, you still can say that there is holes and columns, but uh, each column doesn't have five holes. It has a very long number of holes. This is this will be the wrong uh, the the wrong orientation. This is going to be the wrong way of doing it. It has to be this way. So I call it the horizontal layout. And what's important here is that when you look into the holes, the vertical holes, uh, each uh, uh, column will have five holes. That's important. So that's the first thing. Now what we uh, see is that the top bank is separate from the bottom bank. The top bank is isolated, separated from the bottom bank. That's important. Then also each column is separate from its adjacent columns. So for example, if you look into this column where it says number 5, this column here is separated, isolated from the two adjacent columns, from the next column to uh, uh, the left, which is number 6 in this case, or the right column to number 5, which is number 4, uh, so those columns, those three columns are isolated, which means that each of those columns is isolated and separated. Each column here represents a connection. Each of those columns represent a connection. So the top column is different from the bottom column, and the t any of the top column is also separated from the two adjacent columns. So what I did to show you how is it made and how is it built is if I'm gonna flip the breadboard to the back, I have removed the cover on the back to show you how is it made. So if you look into it in the back, this is the back of the uh, breadboard and you can see that each of those columns, each of those columns is basically a metal that represent a connection and I will try to open one of those one of those metals which represents or tied to the five holes to show you how is it built so I'll try to do that so I'll try to remove this particular one Yeah, let me take it out and I'll remove it and then I'll show you how is it done once you remove it. Here you go, we come back here. I was able to uh, insert the tweezer inside one of those things and now I can remove it out. So here is what I have. And that's where is the five holes will enter. So you can see that it has a kind of clamp, right? So if... Let me flip it back here. 
do it this way. Yeah. So if you look into it, that we have the clamp of each of the holes. So if you insert a wire in any of the holes, it will enter, it will enter into the clamp. Let me show you how the clamp is made. I'll bring another tweezer to show you how is it made and how is it open. Try to use two hands here. I feel like I'm a surgeon with those tools that I have. Maybe I'm an electrical engineering surgeon. Maybe that's the right term. But you can see that this is the clamp where the holes will enter and will clamp into the metal. So for example, I can show you that here. So it will clamp into the wire or any kind of electric component will be inserted into the hole. So when you insert a, a wire, a jumper, or a chip into this, any of those holes, it will clamp into it. So, and you can see that the this particular clamp metal connection is should be over here so you can see it's kind of it's kind of em empty i'm going to replace it back again and i'll show you how it will be once we insert it back again so here is my board yeah, i'll do it with my hand it's easier So now it's back again. So, and this is important to see. Another thing I wanted you to know also is some of the boards, or most of them, uh, will have the rows and the columns are numbered. So over here we have column number one, two, three, four, then number five is numbered, number 10 is numbered, number 15 is numbered, and so forth. So in this particular board, the number of columns will go from one to 65. Also, each of the rows is numbered as A, B, C, D, E, that's for the top five, and then F, G, H, I, J, that's for the bottom five. So basically here, what we say is that each of those vertical five holes is a node, is a connection. And the way the connection is made is by clamping into, it has a piece of metal that will clamp, will be tied into a wire or in an element like resistor or capacitor or a chip like maybe operational amplifier or analog to digital converter or any kind of electric chip that is inserted its pin is inserted inserted into this board will clamp to it uh, another thing i want you to also know even though it is early on for people in circuit one is that each of those two adjacent columns represent the capacitance because capacitance from basic physics is nothing but two parallel conductors separated by insulator which what we have here so this for example if we're going to look over here this is going to be one conductor and this adjacent one can be another uh, conductor that will have a depth so it's a 3d device will have cross-sectional area and will have a distance between them and the distance is very small as you can see so they represent capacitance so any of those two adjacent columns represent capacitance so if we can add all of those capacitances here we call them stray capacitances so breadboards have capacitances and once you get advanced into the electrical engineering uh, you know that those capacitances are parasitic, which will have limits in the frequency response. So things you study later on in circuit theory. In this class, toward the end of the basic circuit theory we study in the sophomore year, that we will introduce the frequency response when we apply sine waves and vary in the frequency. We will introduce that concept. But when you start to develop and build the prototypes, you need to know that there is limits frequency limits on the breadboard. Uh, I believe this particular breadboard will work okay up to one megahertz. And of course they are different based on the type of material, the insulator that is used because the dimensions are very much standard. 
So the type of material that is used and how well conductive the metals are will affect or determine the stray capacitance. Before I include, uh, conclude with this video, I wanted to also show you that there is different types of breadboards. So over here, I'm going to show you now a, a better breadboard that is bigger breadboard that is usually used for prototyping, bigger prototyping. What's so important about this breadboard is that it has power supply terminals. So we call them the, uh, I call them the power supply rails or the star node. And those are very important uh, when it comes to uh, eliminating noise into the circuit. So you can see here for testing and all that, we have those outlets that will take male banana clippers to be inserted over here, uh, you know, for the power supply. So this is, for example, used for ground. And then here we have VA, VB, VC. So you can have up to three power supplies for this particular circuit board. So again, if I'm going to take it vertical, you can see that a uh, little bit vertical over here. So you can see that you also have different type of rails. So we have those five columns that we talked about, the A, B, C, D, E, and then F, G, H, I, J. Those are the five holes for each vertical node. This is the island in the middle. But also we have those horizontal uh, rows. Those are power supply rails. So basically, it's a star node. So if you, for example, wanted to use 5 volts to supply your circuit, you can connect 5 volts to this uh, row, and the entire row is connected together. So this entire row over here is connected to the 5 volts. So and uh, this, is a, uh, this is a different type of uh, breadboard that is used, and it's a little bit better than the previous one that I showed you, the simple one I have showed you earlier. The reason is that you can use those star nodes or the power supply rails. Right? So this particular board will have two rails on each side. So you have the plus and the minus at the bottom here, and you have the plus and the minus at the top over here. And those are used for power supply. So, for example, you can make the minus here to be ground. This one can be 10 volts. This one can be negative 10 volts, the minus on the top. And the other one can be positive 5 volts. So here we can have, for example, four different uh, uh, power voltages, three voltages and one ground. And they are star nodes. And star nodes will minimize noise in your circuit and prototyping. So uh, in the next course we teach here at Washington State University, at the junior year, we design, at the end of the semester, we design a complex circuit. And eliminating the noise of the bar supply is very critical to make the design work in. And we teach them how to filter the noise and how to use star nodes to minimize the bar supply noise because the bar supply noise will propagate through the entire system that they are building. So, uh, and it's a, a practical aspect that they get to learn in the next uh, uh, course that they take. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much.